And welcome to the Peterson Event Center where the Big East meets the Summit League. It's the Panthers at 3-0 against the 1-2 Golden Grizzlies. Jeff Hathorne with Marcus Bowman as the Panthers really led early on by their defense here. Yeah, it has been their defense that has been the catalyst of this early 3-0 start. And what I've liked is they've gotten down force teams to a lot of turnovers, almost 17 turnovers a game, which allowed them to transition on the offensive end and score points as well. And as we go one-on-one, -on -one, we look at some of the numbers, and the other thing that sticks out is the field goal percentage allowed by the Panthers. Absolutely. 37% is, is a formula for winning basketball, and that's a number that Coach Jamie Dixon really pays attention to. He likes to keep opponents under 40%, and he has to be happy early on. And the Panthers will be challenged by two good shooting guards from the Golden Grizzlies, Duke Monday and Travis Bader. Yeah, these are two really good guards, big physical guards that are really capable of putting the ball in the basket. It'll be a good challenge and a good test for these Panther guards tonight to try to keep them contained. And the Oakland Golden Grizzlies coached by Greg Campy. 14th season in Oakland in Division I, 29th season coaching overall for Greg Campy. Big overall record, led him to tournaments in the last four years. And of course, Jamie Dixon in his 10th season as pit head coach, 241 and 77 postseason every year while he's been here with the Panthers, Mark. Yeah. We take a, take a look at the lineups here. Oakland, Travis Bader, Duke Monday, Drew Valentine, Raphael Carter making his first start, and Corey Petros. James Robinson, Trayvon Woodall, Lamar Patterson, Talib Zana, and Steven Adams for the Panthers. The same starting five as we've seen all year. Yeah, have the two freshmen in the starting lineup. You know, those guys have gotten better and better with each and every game, and, and you're starting to see them more and more comfortable out there. So looking forward to them to continue to improve. As we get set for a tip between the Golden Grizzlies and Panthers, Trayvon Woodall, the leading scorer for the Panthers, 16.3 a game coming off 23 against Boise State. Tonight's officials, Michael Stevens, Alfred Smith, and Paul Zelt, as we are ready for basketball here at the Peterson Event Center. It'll be Stephen Adams jumping for the Panthers against Raphael Carter, the freshman from New Zealand. The true seven-footer wins the tap to Tlaib's honor. We're underway here at the Pete. James Robinson, the other freshman, running the point. Zana. Over to Lamar Patterson in the starting lap. We have an early foul as down is Trey Woodall. And an early foul on Duke Mundy. And with the lack of depth from this Oakland team, they cannot afford to get into foul trouble. No, you don't want to make sure uh, that you're having fouls, particularly with your two best players, uh, Mundy being one of them. Uh, so he's got to do a better job of not getting fouls away from the ball. We could see away from the ball. Monday was talking to Trey Woodall, and he had a little smile on his face. Maybe he baited him into an early foul. Turnover by the Panthers. It'll be Oakland basketball. Yeah, Oakland's really going to try to do that tonight. They're going to try to pressure the ball. Uh, Monday is a tremendous defender. Uh, he's a guy that you know, tries to gamble a lot of the defensive ends, so the Panthers are going to have to do a good job of taking care of the ball, which is what they've done all year. Duke Monday, one of the leading scores. We previewed early in the game, a turnover. Now, Monday, earlier in the season, had a nine turnover game in a loss to Louisiana Lafayette. So while he can't score, he is prone to the turnover. Yeah, he has to do a better job of taking care of the basketball, and he's really going to have to do a good job tonight of taking care of the ball against this Panthers defense. As we talked about earlier, forcing almost 17 turnovers a game. Man-to-man -man early on from Oakland. Lamar Patterson, drive, kicks back out. Robinson for three. James Robinson, the freshman out of Baltimore, Maryland, with first points in this basketball game. You know, you got to give credit to Lamar Patterson on that play. You know, he's really done a great job of finding other guys. Hasn't scored a lot early on, but he's done a great job of getting assists and finding guys wide open. A good offensive rebound by Corey Petros as it's a 3-2 ball game. James Robinson, a freshman who understands the defensive end as well. As a turnover there by Trey Woodall. Ball knocked around, and it will be Oakland basketball. Yeah, I think we may have a change here. I think that ball might have gone off on Carter there last. Good job right there by the officials of getting together and make sure that they got it right here. You'll see that. 
Carter was clearly the last person to tip that ball out. It's a close call early on. But the, Pan but the officials get it right. 3-2 Panthers. Minute and a half into this matchup between Big East and Summit League. Golden Grizzlies 0-13 against Big East opponents. Steven Adams, the deep jumper. Off the glass, no good. Bader with the rebound. Here come the Golden Grizzlies. With Monday, we like to push it. And Bader, you got to watch out from him. 25 feet in. Yeah, he's an incredible outside shooter. The Panthers have to know where he is at all times. You can't help off of a great shooter like him. Have to stay at home. And kick out, knocked out of bounds. 19 on the clock for the Golden Grizzlies to get off the shot. Head coach Greg Campy, 29th year coaching. The Ohio native leading this Oakland program four straight postseasons. Yeah, he's done a tremendous job at Oakland. Uh, you know, he was a coach there a couple years ago when this Panthers team played them in the NCAA tournament. Um, and he's done a fabulous job. And we have a foul on the Panthers on James Robinson with the hole. There you see Campy with an interesting suit. I like that suit. Very nice and colorful. Valentine the basketball, fresh 35. As to leaves on intimidate Bader's shot there. Monday passes up. And here's Bader's first three attempt. It's rounded out. Rebound tipped around and controlled by the Panthers. Here comes Robinson, who has the Panthers points with an early three-pointer. Turnover, but he's able to get it back over to Steven Adams. Loses the ball to leave Zana. Left-handed. No foul call, 5-2 Panthers. That's what you call being in the right place at the right time right there. It looked like the Panthers were going to turn the ball over, but Tlaib Zana was in the right place at the right time and showed up and was able to get the easy layup. But the Panthers got to do a better job right there on the defensive end. Have to not let guys get deep into the paint and uh, put pressure defense on your big man. Have to do a better job of containing dribble penetration. Good drive by Monday. It's a 5-4 basketball game. The lob into Adams, too deep. Another turnover for the Panthers, something we haven't seen a lot of. That's number two on the game. Yeah, and even though they only have two turnovers, there's been a little lackadaisical with the basketball early on here. Need to get settled down. You know, like you talked about, they've been a team that's forced a lot of teams into turnovers but have not turned the ball over themselves. I think you'll see them settle down here. Same type of pattern against Fordham in their win a week ago. Earlier this week, actually, James Robinson running it for the Panthers over to Zana. Zana, the off-balance jumper, no good. Rebound by Mundy. He has one on three, and we'll pull it up at the three-point line over to Bader. Bader, the deep three. Long rebound, high rebound. To lead Zana, comes down with it. Here's Trey Woodall running the point for the first time. All left hand, no good. Tipped by Steven Adams, and we'll get it over the back on Steven Adams. As Dante Taylor and J.J. Moore check into the game for Adams and Zana. You know, I thought that was a nice job right there by Trey Woodall of, of uh, driving to the paint and drawing some contact. Just got to do a little bit better job of finishing after the contact. Oakland with an opportunity to take their first lead of this game. Works around the double screen, has an open three pointer, and he nails it. Very nice open lead at 7 5. Yeah, I was going to say, very nice shot right there by Monday. You know, he was let open by a screen right there from Carter and stepped up and got squared up and made the shot. Panthers down two, Lamar Patterson, who hasn't scored as much this year, but Jamie Dixon's talked about the hockey assist from him. Yeah, and that's something that I think is a strength of his game. You know, he really finds guys, and he knows where guys are supposed to be on the court. And he does a good job of getting guys in the right spots. Dante Taylor at the foul line finds a wide open J.J. Moore. Very nice job right there by Dante Taylor. Catching the ball at that high post area and turning and facing and looking at the basket. And an even better job by J.J. Moore of cutting after his guy helped. Deep three by Monday. That's an air ball to J.J. Moore. Here comes Lamar Patterson. Great vision. Sees Trey Woodall for three. No good. Rebound to Valentine. Here comes Monday the other way for the Golden Grizzlies. Tie basketball game. Just under five minutes in. Valentine looks for the play call from Greg Campy. 
You know, this Oakland team really likes to spread the court and have court. And the turnover. Good job by the Panthers as Dante Taylor finds J.J. Moore. Panthers and Grizzlies tied at seven on Hit Panthers television. Welcome back to the Peterson Event Center where the Panthers and Golden Grizzlies tied at seven as Duke Mondays helped early on for the Oakland Grizz to stay tied. Yeah, here you saw it was a great screen by Petros there. And Mundy is a guy that likes to get pull up for a jump shot off of his left hand dribble. And did a good job right there squaring up and knocking down the three pointer. He's a transfer from Providence, you know, a big physical guard, really likes to pressure the ball on defense. So this will be a good challenge here for the Panthers. 51 points in his last two games for Monday as the Panthers will inbound. Tied early on. And something we saw in the Fordham game where the Panthers it took a little, little while for them to get comfortable in the basketball game. Trey Ziegler in the basketball game for the first time as he is double teamed. Knocks it off a Golden Grizzly. 23 on the shot clock. So it's Ziegler, Patterson, Moore, Dante Taylor, and Trey Woodall. And Ziegler's got to do a little bit better job of not picking up his dribble right there as he gets trapped in the corner. Usually nowhere to you, for you to go right there, so you have to make sure you keep that dribble alive. The attempted alley-oop to J.J. Moore knocked out of bounds. Panthers ball. You know, Oakland is doing a really good job of, of pressuring the first pass. The Panthers have to do a much better job of cutting and getting open. Trey Ziegler misses the easy one there. Loose ball to Duke Mundy. He comes the other way. He's going to challenge and spin on Lamar Patterson. No good. Rebound to Patterson. Nice job right there by J.J. Moore. Jumping straight up and straight down and not drawing the contact. Ball tipped out of bounds by Valentine. Panthers civet. Six off the shot clock. As J.J. Moore has been the spark off the bench for the Panthers early on in this season. Ziegler thought about the three, got it over to Woodall. His three is no good. Offensive rebound to Dante Taylor. He works it, lays it up and in, Dante Taylor. Yeah, very nice job right there by Dante Taylor. He's been a guy that's really rebound at a high level this year. He's the leading rebounder of this team coming off the bench at seven rebounds a game. Good job of gathering himself and going up strong and finishing. And Monday, he'll work for his shot as he puts it in. We're retied at nine. Monday was seven of the Oakland nine points. Good screen by Dante Taylor. Trey Woodall misses another three ball tapped around and controlled by Oakland. They look to take the lead for the second time in this game. Yeah, I think if you're uh, Coach Jamie Dixon, you want to see the ball get worked inside a little bit. Early on here, Panthers, I think, shooting a little too many three-pointers. Got to work the ball inside and get inside out, and those open threes will be there. Monday looking down low. Boy Petros trying to get position on Dante Taylor. 
10 on the shot clock for the Golden Grizzlies. It's Trey Ziegler on Monday. He gets it into Petros, makes a move, spins on Dante Taylor, no good, rebound to J.J. Moore. Here come the Panthers. Trey Whittle behind the back, but turns it over. Here come the Golden Grizzlies the other way. Valentine throws up a wild shot, but it goes down, and the Golden Grizzlies have a two-point lead. Yeah, the Panthers have to do a much better job of taking care of the basketball. You know, not a typical night so far, this Panthers team already uh, with a few turnovers. I think once they settle down a little bit, start running their offense, just making a simple play, see them be a little more efficient on the offensive end. Four turnovers for the Panthers. As Trey Ziegler with 12 on the shot clock, will drive, kick it out. Jump shot, up. No good by Dante Taylor, knocked out of bounds. Oakland basketball. It's an 11-9 Golden Grizzly lead. You're watching Pitt Panthers television. Peterson Event Center where Oakland leads the Panthers 11-9 here early on. Coach Dixon and the Panthers travel to Madison Square Garden on Wednesday, November 21st to face number five Michigan in the semifinal round of the NIT season tip-off. Tip-off is set for 9.30 and the game will be televised on ESPN2. Log on to Game Day Central at PittsburghPanthers.com for more information. Panthers turning the ball over, something we haven't really seen from a Panthers basketball team. Yeah, it's also a little sloppy start here. Uh, both teams turn the ball over a little too much. And, you know, four turnovers is a really high number uh, for the Panthers early. And here you see that uh, not too many scores off of the turnovers yet. But uh, I think once the Panthers settle down a little bit here, start running their offense, uh, you'll see them, you know, stop with the turnovers and hope to settle down. Head coach Jamie Dixon in his 10th year watching his Panthers trail early on to an Oakland team that is used to playing in tough environments. The drive and out of bounds. Dante Williams has checked into the game. Ball knocked out by a Panther will be Golden Grizzly basketball. Not a very deep team are the Golden Grizzlies. Lloyd Neely into the game as well for Oakland. And an offensive foul on Neely, a legal screen. The Panthers get the ball, trailing by two. 11-9 Oakland here early at the Peterson Event Center as Greg Campy is already working the officials. Let's see if the Panthers can get something going here offensively. Try to get the ball inside, see if they can get an easy look, or maybe get some ball screen action. James Robinson back into the game for the Panthers with Trey Ziegler. Deron Johnson in the game for the first time as well, the redshirt freshman. It's Robinson, and they're going to call the foul on Ryan Bass. Ryan Bass had 11 points in their game at Boise last week, and here you see Bass just a little too too much hands. 
and that's something that this Oakland team is, you know, really going to try to do. They're going to try to pressure the Panthers on offense and take away the first pass as well. Ziggler with the leaner, no good. Petros with the rebound for Oakland. Rebound surprisingly, 8-7 lead as Bass drives the lane and lays it up and in. A four-point lead for Oakland. Very nice job right there by Bass. You know, he's the backup point guard. He's a, a very quick player who, you know, looks to attack and transition, and there you saw an example of that right there. Five foot nine out of Dayton, Ohio. It's basically Michigan or Ohio players for the Golden Grizzlies. As J.J. Moore will attempt a three. No good. Rebound to Dante Taylor and a foul on Lloyd Neely, his second. Dante Taylor once again doing a great job of putting himself in offensive rebound position, holding his ground, going up strong and grabbing the rebound and tucking it into his body and being really strong with the ball. That was something that he had trouble with at times last year, not being physical with the ball when, even when he came up with the offensive rebound. It's four fouls on Oakland to two for the Panthers, who haven't had a field goal now in over three minutes. Trey Ziegler guarded by Bader. Over to Robinson with 18 on the shot clock. J.J. Moore will drive. It gets knocked loose. Turnover for the Panthers. As Bader controls. It's number five. Ryan Bass leading this Oakland team as they're looking to build on a four-point lead. Panthers in man-to-man. -man. Bader guarded closely by Ziegler into Petros. Knocks it out. Wide open jumper for Valentine. Three-pointer no good. Ziegler with the rebound. James Robinson will start a dribble, and he'll set up the offense. Ziggler over to J.J. Moore. Moore, spin move. Or the glass, no good. Offensive rebound again for Dante Taylor. Yeah, you know, we keep talking about Dante Taylor. He's doing a great job, you know, on the offensive rebound and putting himself in position. You know, he's also doing a good job here defensively, too. I think that's something that, you know, Coach Jamie Dixon is taking notice of early on in this game. Four points, three rebounds for the senior. Ryan Bass with 15 on the shot clock. Looks to get it down low to Petros. Ball knocked around and controlled by Oakland. Petros gets it back for the easy layup. No panic there from the Grizzly as Jamie Dixon takes a 30-second timeout. Points in the paint. 12 for Oakland. As we look at that last play, ball knocked around. Petros goes to the floor for that, but is able to find an open man and then get the ball back. And interesting give and go, Marcus. <laughs> I don't think that's quite how they rolled it up, but, you know, great job right there by Oakland, you know, hustling on the play. And Petros cutting down to the, down to the lane and getting a, an opportunity for an easy basket. It's been a hustling Oakland team that we've seen. You know, you talked about, you know, this Oakland team having a lot of guys from Michigan and Ohio. You know, those are two states that are known to have very, very tough basketball players, guys that take pride in defense, guys that like to get in your face on the defensive end and really, really hustle. You can tell that early on in this game, that's an identity of this Oakland team. They've been able to do it for the last couple of minutes without Duke Monday. And we'll check back into the game with the next whistle. Deron Johnson with the basketball. As Talib Zahn is back in along with Steven Adams. James Robinson has a three earlier in the game. He's going to pump, shoot, no good, but he's going to go to the line and shoot two. You know, that was a veteran play right there by James Robinson. It sounds odd saying a veteran play by a freshman, but good job of, as you see right here, using the shot fake and jumping into the guy's body, and giving himself an opportunity to go to the line. Could have been either one, but Williams gets the foul. Robinson with four points. Panthers leading the score along with Dante Taylor early on as Bader and Petros go out. And into the game is Monday. You know, we've talked a lot of great things about this uh, this freshman point guard, James Robinson, out of out of the D.C. area. And he's lived up to everything that the coaches have expected of him. He's done a really nice job of running the team. Been a great defender. You know, how many freshmen can you trust to put on who I consider probably one of the top guards in the country and C.J. McCollum in their last win over Lehigh. Panthers basically have their starting lineup as the layup is up and in for Drew Valentine. 
14 points in the paint. That's where they're making their living early on. The only non-starter in there is Deron Johnson. Yeah, and the Panthers got to do a much better job of containing dribble penetration so they don't get an opportunity to get those easy shots in the paint. Well, the active hands from the Golden Grizzly knocked the ball out of bounds. Deron Johnson will inbounds. There's Jamie Dixon calling the play, and Robinson gets the inbound. 23 on the shot clock for the Panthers, trailing by four. Deron Johnson's first shot attempt. Too strong rebound to Oakland. Ryan Bass guarded by Trey Woodall. Over to Valentine. As he has Robinson on him. Backdoor cut for Monday. Guarded by Deron Johnson. Wild shot. But he's going to get the foul and go to the foul line. Duke Monday, seven points in the game, and he heads to the foul line as Oakland is surprising the Panthers. 17-13 on Pitt Panthers television. Welcome back to the Peterson Event Center where Oakland leads the Panthers 17-13. Panthers headlines brought to you by the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Panthers advance to the NIT season tip-off Final Four at Madison Square Garden. That comes up Wednesday on ESPN2 against the University of Michigan. Panthers headlines brought to you by the Post-Gazette. The 18th ranked wrestling team faces number five Ohio State at two tomorrow. You can watch online at OSU Buckeye Vision. And also the football final Big East home game next Saturday at Heinz Field against Rutgers. It's a noon kick on ESPN2, ESPNU. As Duke Monday goes to the line for the first free throw shots by the Golden Grizzlies. Eight points for Monday. As we mentioned, who would be key? Monday and Bader. Bader hasn't really done anything yet, but Monday, nine points in this basketball game of the 19 Oakland has. Yeah, he's doing it on both ends of, of the floor, uh, scoring as well as guarding Trey Woodall, the leading scorer of the Pitt Panthers. And, you know, we talked about it. He's a physical guard. He's going to get in your face. He's really going to try to make things difficult on Trey. Was the Big East leader in steals before he transferred from Providence. To open. Dante Taylor, 11 on the shot clock to Trey Woodall. Woodall looking for Tlaib Zana. Kick. Nine on the, 15 on the shot clock as they reset. Following the kick, and Patterson will inbounds. Panthers shooting just 29% in this basketball game. Shot clock winding down. Woodall working off the screen from Taylor. Will drive and get the offensive foul. That's number one on Woodall. Six-point lead for Oakland. Yeah, great, great job right here by Williams stepping up. 
and getting into the driving lane and having his feet set, taking the charge there. Jamie Dixon will burn another timeout. Their second of the first half. What do you suppose is happening in this huddle? Well, I think he's probably telling them to make sure that they got to take care of the basketball and just make the easy pass, run the sets, and the shots will be there for them. And the Panthers excited about their freshman, James Robinson, who we see to hit a big three, and Steven Adams. 70% shooting for Adams, and Robinson has one turnover in his first 85 minutes. Yeah, these two guys have played tremendous this year. You know, two freshmen that, you know, aren't quite freshmen. You know, they, they, they're physically and mentally uh, a little more mature than a freshman, which has allowed them, you know, to play a lot of minutes and be big, big key contributors to this pit team. And those are two guys that I think you'll continue to see grow, you know, as this year goes along. Panthers' last field goal coming at 9.35. It is a six-point Oakland lead. Grizzly one and two on the season. The drive by Bass. He gets the foul call on Trey Woodall as Woodall picks up a quick two. Yeah, Oakland is doing a great job of putting pressure on the Panthers guards. You know, really driving to the lane. You know, here as you see, you know, looking to attack here Bass. And Trey Woodall's got to do a better job of, of moving his feet side to side. Five fouls on each side as Bass makes the first free throw. Trey Ziegler. Now in for Woodall, who sits down. Woodall, no points in this game, and it's Panthers' leading score at 16.3. And now Travis Bader will check in for Bass. Yeah, and I think you have to give a lot of credit to Mundy. You know, he's, he's done a tremendous defensive job on Trey Woodall, really making things tough and then pressuring the ball, being physical with him. Oakland Grizzlies on a 14-4 run, an eight-point lead here at the Peterson Event Center. And Trey Ziegler nearly turns it over, 22 on the shot clock. As he gets it over to Robinson. Inside, followed by Talib Zana. He's able to knock it off. Bader will be Panthers basketball with 15 on the clock. You know, we've talked about this over and over, but Oakland is doing a great job on the defensive end, really forcing the Panthers to start their offense way out farther than what they would like, having them almost out to the half-court line. The Panthers got to do a much better job of dribble penetrating, getting the ball inside, and being strong with the basketball. James Robinson as the shot clock is dwindling. Robinson the fourth shot, up and in. James Robinson. Yeah, and there's that freshman that we talked about. Very tough shot right there by James Robinson. You know, I thought that was great defense by Mundy, but James Robinson just did a better job and made a better shot. Drive by Mundy. Block shot from Dante Taylor, who's off to a good start in this basketball game. Ziggler's going to go coast to coast, lay it up. No good, but he'll shoot two. Foul on Rafael Carter. His first. Yeah, here you see right here, uh, Dante Taylor doing a great job of going up vertical with two hands and coming up with the big block, which led to Trey Ziegler having an opportunity here to go to the line to make two free throws. This is the first. Petros into the ball game as Carter will sit down. Panthers, two of three from the line now, shooting just 33% in this first half, and two misses from Ziegler, and the rebound to Mundy. Mundy guarded by Ziegler, Panthers in a man-to-man -man defense. Valentine, the switch. Mundy, Patterson on him. Talib Zana is on Bader right now. Mundy's gonna drive right past. Dante or Lamar Patterson, but again, Dante Taylor picks up the foul. Oh, the blocking foul, or excuse me, the charge that we'll see right here. Yeah, here you see Dante Taylor is just doing a great job on both ends of the floor. Here you see him rotate all the way over. I think he probably, you know, Monday probably thought he was going to go for the block again, and, and Taylor did a good job of getting outside of that, that key area and drawing the charge. 5.32 to go in the first half. Monday has to leave with his second foul. Oakland's up six. You know, Lamar Patterson, the guy with the ball right now, he's the guy that I think you have to look for. As Dante Taylor picks up the blocking foul right there, legal screen, Oakland basketball. 
you know, it's very difficult on those sprint screens to get settled, but you have to do a great job of getting your feet settled and not moving on those screens. The Panthers are 94 and three against non-conference opponents here at the Peterson Events Center, but are trailing by six in the first half to Oakland, Michigan, trailing by eight now. Good backdoor cut as Valentine lays it up and in. Yeah, great job right there by Valentine of cutting to the ball. Once he saw his guy, Panthers went with a double team right there in the post. And got to do a better job on the off end of rotating to the open guy. Trey Ziegler, Trapp gets it over to Robinson. Well, he's doing a nice job of taking his right hand away as Robinson has to float it over to Ziegler inside to leave Zana, who lays it up. No good. Offensive rebound again to Dante Taylor. He's going to work on Bader. Gets it over to Talib Zana for the flush. You know, Dante Taylor, I think, has really been the MVP so far for this Panthers team in this game. You know, he came off the bench, providing a lot of energy. You've seen it on both ends of the floor. Right there, he did a great job of being strong with the ball and finding Talib Zana for the easy dunk. Petros, double team down low by Taylor and Zana. Loose ball to Talib Zana. Here come the Panthers the other way. Ray Ziegler to Patterson, passes up on the three-pointer. He'll get it over to Robinson, who's guarded closely by Bass. You know, I think Coach Jamie Dixon really would have liked to see Lamar Patterson take that jump shot. You know, he's a guy that I think he has to be aggressive on the offensive end. You know, one of the things we talk about, his strength is that he finds others, but he also can shoot the ball as well. Robinson, the pump fake, and he lays it up left hand. Off the board, no good. Rebound to Bass, the shortest man on the court. Also draws the foul on Robinson, his second foul. Panthers trailing by six against the Oakland Grizzlies as Talib Zana brings the Panthers a little closer on Pitt Panthers television. Fans, be sure to tune in every Sunday for the latest edition of Pit Live Wire Extra, the show that gives you an inside view of Panthers athletics every week. For airtimes, go to PittsburghPanthers.com and click the On Air button or check out Pit Live Wire blog at PittsburghPanthers.com slash blog where you'll find that show and even more great coverage of Pitt basketball. Panthers trailing by six to the Oakland Grizzlies and very evident in the shooting percentage mark. Yeah, Oakland is shooting about 53% from the floor. You know, and the Panthers have done a great job this year in their first three games of holding teams to low field goal percentage, as we talked about earlier. You know, Coach Dixon really likes to see the opponent's field goal percentage under 40%. Uh, they've held held opponents this year to about 37%, so they got to do a little bit better job of buckling down. You've seen that on the last few defensive possessions. Ryan Bass shooting 101, seven fouls on each team. Bass with four points, two of two so far from the line. And that shot no good, but rebound controlled by Petros. He throws it up and in, and a foul. Great job right there by Petros. You know, I really think he was just kind of in the right place at the right time, a long rebound. But he was very strong with the ball and 
and went up aggressively and, and drew the contact and got an and one. Philippe Zana picks up the foul. As Petros finishes the three-point play. The biggest lead of the game for the Oakland Grizzlies at nine is Jamie Dixon's team trailing at home a rare sight against non-conference foes. Let's see how this last four minutes of this half goes coming out of the TV timeout. You know, that was something that the Panthers has done a great job of this year, winning the last four minutes of, of the first half, down by nine. Let's see how they respond. Teron Johnson with the three. No good. Panthers struggling from three as the rebound to the Grizzlies. One of six now for Pitt from three after making their first one of the game. Yeah, and I think a lot of those threes have been rushed. I thought that was a really good shot right there by Deron Johnson. Very open. He's a very capable shooter of making that shot. And the nice inside pass to Petros. He puts it up and in. A double-digit lead for Oakland. I have to give Oakland a lot of credit. They've done a great job you know, on the offensive end of finding open guys. And, you know, Panthers got to do a much better job of pressuring the ball and not making those passes so easy. Meanwhile, defensively, nice job from Oakland. They have forced seven Panther turnovers. Ziegler travels with the basketball. Another turnover from Pitt. That's number eight. It's J.J. Moore checks into the game. Yeah, I think the Panthers are a little out of sync right here on offense. Uh, not quite running all of their sets. As we talked about, a little bit too many turnovers. Just need to settle down, screen, pass, make the easy pass. And I think they'll see things turn around here offensively. But you got to give a lot of credit to Oakland. They've done a, done a tremendous job of pressuring the ball and making things tough. And they've done it on this stretch as Bader makes his first three of the game. And another timeout from Jamie Dixon. He's had to burn three in this first half. It is a 31-17 Oakland lead. Yeah, here you see right here Bader, who we talked about earlier in the game. You know, he's a tremendous outside shooter. Got to do a much better job of getting your hands up, but even a little bit more crowding him off of that, running him off that three-point line and turning him into a driver. Bader made 124 threes last year. That was second in the NCAA. He has made a three now in 24 straight games as Jamie Dixon very animated with his team. As they'll come out to the floor with Dante Taylor, Lamar Patterson, Trey Ziegler, Trey Woodall, and J.J. Moore. Now, Moore has been a spark for them off the bench. It's Panthers' last lead came at 13-43. Since then, it's been all open. Dante Taylor working the screen over to J.J. Moore. He'll try a three. And it's in. J.J. Moore, the three. Very nice job right there by the Panthers running the set play, having a hot ball screen for Trey Woodall. And once Dante Taylor rolled to the basket, that allowed his guy, uh, J.J. Moore's guy, to be occupied with him and gave him a wide-open three-pointer. See the Panthers return of the defensive pressure here. Force a turnover or a bad shot from Oakland. You can see Brandon Knight, your former teammate, is screaming at the Panthers. Defensively is a steal by Bass. And another offensive possession for the Grizzlies. You know, J.J. Moore's got to do a much better job of keeping that ball high. Can't bring that ball down. Give those guards an opportunity to swipe at it. Pass open, 18 on the shot clock. Bader, another three. Same position, same result. Well, Trey Woodall was late trailing on that screen. You would like right there for for J.J. Moore to maybe help Trey Wood all out and get out on the shooter. Got to recognize the shooters out there. And Bader is definitely, as we talked about, one of the top shooters in the country. Can't allow him to have open looks. First half winding down. Trey Woodall with the basketball, 15 on the shot clock. Woodall driving. And ball knocked around, out of bounds. It will be Panther ball with nine on the shot clock. Bass is active hands. Yeah, we've talked about this over and over. Uh, the Oakland guards are doing a great job of pressuring the Panthers guards. They got to be more strong with the ball and drive to the hole. Nice job by Trey Woodall, but he couldn't finish. Offensive rebound to J.J. Moore. Panthers can hold for the final shot if they want, but Woodall's going to try the three. No good rebound to Dante Taylor, and we'll have a foul on Valentine, his first. Dante Taylor will go to the line. 
with the one-on-one. You know, Dante Taylor has done a great job in this first half and put himself in offensive rebound and position. He's really kind of what's held the Panthers in this offensively. Taylor misses. And we've got a timeout. First timeout called by Oakland. As they'll set up their last shot, 16 and a half to go. As they've surprised the Panthers here, up 14, 20 points in the paint. Panther fans, get your blue and gold gear at the Panthers team store and online store. New Nike gear is available now. Shop today at the Panthers team store located in the lobby of the Peterson Event Center or online at PittsburghPanthers.com. See Pitt fans a little surprised, as I think we all are, by a 14-point lead from Oakland. Yeah, and I think you have to give all of the credit to Oakland. They've done a tremendous job on both ends of the floor, starting with their defense, you know, really making things tough for the Panthers guards. Panthers 94 and three. It's a 97 percent winning percentage against non-conference teams right in this building. As Oakland will get the last shot. Bader, who will shoot from anywhere, gives it up. Valentine looking back for Bader, knocked away by Dante Taylor. Here comes Patterson. Can he beat the shot clock? Fade away three, no good. And Oakland leads it 34 to 20 as Jamie Dixon's Panthers will head into halftime trailing for the first time at half this young season. Yeah, and I think he'll be telling his team in a half that we got to make sure to, you know, take better care of the basketball. To leave Sana with the lefty, J.J. Moore with a few highlights, but it's been all Oakland, a 14-point lead. We're back with halftime here on Pitt Panthers Television. That's... Hey, these aren't mine. They don't even have any lenses in them. They're probably Brussels. Well, where are mine then? What was that? Oh, nothing. Just missed the exit. ESPN, your NBA destination for games Wednesdays and Fridays. Welcome into the ESPN3 Halftime Report. I'm Cassidy Hubbard. Coming up, Duke head coach Mike Krzyzewski breaks down one of his favorite offensive sets in an edition of ESPNU's Coach's Clicker. But first, with plenty of early season and holiday tournaments tipping off this week, our own Andy Katz breaks down what to watch for in the coming week. Tournaments toward the back end of November can have great shelf life wins for teams trying to get into the NCAA tournament or just build their resumes to get high seeds come March. They also can show us whether or not teams are contenders or pretenders heading into the conference season. And there are three tournaments to keep an eye on toward the back end of November. First, let's look at the Orlando Old Spice Classic. Gonzaga, which had maybe the most dominating performance during our tip-off marathon where they crushed West Virginia and Spokane. They go into this tournament as the favorite. And you would think that they would meet West Virginia again down in Orlando. But keep an eye on Davidson. Davidson held a double-digit lead at the pit over New Mexico before blowing that lead. If those two teams meet, it would re be a rematch of an NCAA tournament game in 2008 in Raleigh, won by Davidson. Out in Anaheim, it looked like a weak field heading into the preseason, but then Xavier surprised all of us with their convincing home win over Butler during that tip-off marathon. If that Xavier team shows up, then the Musketeers have a great shot to get to the final in Anaheim. The other team to keep an eye on is Cal. Cal was not talked about a lot in the preseason out of the Pac-12, but they did make the NCAA tournament last season. 
course, it's been the talk of Arizona and UCLA, maybe Stanford. But Cal has a legitimate shot to compete for that Pac-12 title. If they win this tournament, if they knock off a school like Xavier, then keep an eye on the Bears going forward into January. And then arguably the best early season tournament is down in the Bahamas at Atlantis, the battle for Atlantis. You've got Duke coming off a victory over Kentucky in the Champions Classic. Louisville, a preseason top two school. Then Missouri, we still don't know a lot about the Tigers yet. They're in this field as well, as is Memphis. Those are probably the four top teams heading down to the Bahamas. But once again, Stanford, a potential sleeper coming out of this field. Minnesota with the return of Trevor and Bakwe. Northern Iowa, VCU. There's a lot of quality teams in this field that certainly could cause some problems. But heading into Atlantis, Duke and Louisville still appear to be the favorites. So we can learn a lot here in late November as who could be contenders in their respective conferences and, of course, building those resume wins for March. Thanks, Andy. Coming up, Coach K schools us on one of his favorite offensive sets. Something tells me, though, he's not going to give away all of his secrets. Stick around. Hey, Kenny, your latest album, man, that just kills me. I listen to that every single night before I go to bed. It speaks to me. Mm -hmm. Hey, Kenny, seriously, I was thinking, you know, we hang out sometimes. You give me your cell phone number, we can get together and maybe hang out like boys, regular guys. Sorry, man. Doesn't look like there's any room here. Maybe you should go sit at the anchor table. Dude, what's on your phone? Let's watch ESPN. It's an app that lets me watch ESPN live on my phone. Sounds hard to understand. Actually, it's pretty simple. Michigan's on right now. What's that? Let's watch ESPN. The app that lets you watch ESPN live on your phone. That sounds hard to understand. It's simple, look. Michigan's on. Huh. Let me get a cheeseburger. Visit watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. Welcome back to the ESPN3 Halftime Report. With four national championships, three gold medals, and the title of Division I men's college basketball's all-time winningest coach, it's safe to say that Mike Krzyzewski knows his way around the basketball court. The Duke head coach and Hall of Famer drops some knowledge on us as he walks us through one of his favorite half-court offenses in ESPNU's Coach's Clicker. I now welcome into the ESPNU film room Duke head coach Mike Krzyzewski and coach. We're going to look at a a set that you actually end up getting three different options off of that same set. Kind of walk us through and talk us through initially on the whiteboard what you're looking for. Well, it's a set that comes out of our elbow series where we can start five up or down, but one comes and basically what happens is four goes and gets two who sets his man up here and when he comes up he hits and cuts here. At the same time Five then is running into a ball screen right here. Two then can use the ball screen. Five can roll and four pops. One then has, rather two has a chance to take a shot, hit five rolling, toss back to four for the three, or he can hit right here for two guys who are open for, th for three. So it actually has, all five players can score off the set. You mentioned uh bringing this guy on a running ball screen action. Why is that important? Why do you think that's hard to guard? Well, it's hard to guard because usually the defender is below and then you know where you're running before the defender does. So you, you, can, get a, you can beat him in that race. Sure. And then it's important where he sets the screen so he doesn't set it high, but he sets it kind of below the man so you can try to force more of a switching situation. The ultimate is if this X switches to two, and the guy on two switches to the big, and then you have this big guy down here bearing uh, a perimeter guy. Okay. With any on-ball action, obviously the first option always is to turn the corner and get to the rim. Let's take a look at this same set, three different options that come off of it, and it starts right there with the on-ball action that you're talking about. The sprint up action has occurred, and now talk us through what's going on at that spot right well, there. Well, he actually should be just a little bit lower on this, but he sets a pretty good screen. These guys right here should be uh, they should be loaded up for shots. And then Ryan Kelly here, this guy's got to uh, protect. He's in a position where he might have to protect the roller. So a lot of times you'll get 
the, the kickback uh, for the three, and Ryan's a really good shooter. This, is, this was a, one of our better sets of last year. Spacing, obviously, very, very important from what you just talked us through. Austin Rivers gets all the way to the rim. Same set now coming up, uh, but you go to a different option off of it. Well, now, you know, when, they, when they go on it, watch what he's going to do right here, the defender. And as he does that, Austin has an ability right now. I mean, Ryan is wide open, and he's wide open even if he gets hit. Mason, then, what it does, it, it puts your guy posting, and he can get in a four-round one set where there isn't a double team. So right. this is a, a good movement. Actually, it's a set that we've used with our Olympic team also. And here he gets the, and that's that he's isolated one-on-one. -on -one. And that guy guarding him has had to move up and down right. and defend him, defend the ball screen, and then defend him. So you have multiple defensive assignments in the same sequence. Uh, simple action that, that gives you different looks, different defenses uh, to just to, again, the, the same set, your down screen action to pop him out, ball screen set. Now, as always, you're always looking for this guy to be aggressive coming off of the action. What does Austin Rivers see here? Well, he sees that he has a big guy on him, which is a good thing for, for us. And they see, the defense sees that they have a big guy on him, so they're going to probably leave their shooters a little bit more. So Austin's either going to have to go, a chance to go one-on-one -on -one or one of these guys is going to be open for, for a three. And there's the step back, room and rhythm, bam, nothing but the bottom. Yeah, when you have a big guy guarding a guard like that, then there's a good chance he's going to get his shot off. All these plays, uh, Austin Rivers was the guy handling it. Right. Austin Rivers is no longer with you. Who's in that spot this year? Uh, we're not using that set, no, <laughs> <laughs> that much. Actually, we're not using it as much. But uh, uh, if we did it, we might do it in, uh, for a Seth Curry. Okay. Uh, because Seth can really shoot well behind the ball screen, although he's not a driver. You know, to have him come off of ball screens, especially after he comes off of a down screen and that get a ball screen, there's right. a good chance that he'll have some, uh, some air there where he has a chance to the freedom of shooting. I know this from watching over the years. No matter what set Coach K runs, spacing, timing, and reads are going to be a part of it. That's why they're hard to guard year after year. Thanks Thank, for your time, Coach. Thanks, Jimmy. Coach K has a lot to work with this season in the era of one and dones. Duke has experience on their side with six upperclassmen, including seniors Mason Plumley and Seth Curry. Should be exciting to see how well this team gels throughout the year. That's a wrap on the ESPN3 Halftime Report. I'm Cassidy Hubbard. Enjoy the second half. chance to win this thing or what? Dude, you invented three catchphrases. Get some toast because here comes the jam. That was brilliant. Yeah, that, that was pretty good. Okay, everybody, we have a little announcement to make today. The Employee of the Month Award goes to our very own Doris. She does make a mean sloppy joke. I mean, how hard is that? SPNRadio.com. Sunday, Countdown looks at the growing trend of NFL legends criticizing their former teams. We've never seen this style of head coaching. I deserve that. I'll take it. That's my responsibility. And find out why Andrew Luck is more than just a quarterback. Plus, Peyton Manning and the art of the fourth quarter comeback. What a throw! What a comeback! Sunday, NFL Countdown presented by IBM. 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN, where fans go for football. ESPN Radio Sports Center. I'm Alan Siegel. A very busy day in college football. Definite 
BCS Bowl ramifications. Top-ranked Kansas State faces Baylor tonight on ESPN HD. Second-ranked Oregon will host Stanford on ABC HD. Both games about to kick off. Third-ranked Notre Dame beat Wake Forest 38-0 to go to 11-0. USC is ahead next Saturday night in Los Angeles. Fourth-ranked Alabama beat Western Carolina 49-0. Fifth-ranked Georgia beat Georgia Southern 45-14. Elsewhere in Ann Arbor, there was a pretty impressive day by a Michigan quarterback, and I'm not talking Denard Robinson. From the 37-yard line of the Hawkeyes, it's Michigan with third down and 17. They've got to get to the Iowa 20 to keep the drive alive. Gardner rolling left, still rolling, stops, throws off his back foot, oh. wide open into the end zone. It's a catch by Roundtree and a touchdown for the Wolverines. The call by Dave Lamont on ESPN Radio as that touchdown by Michigan, one of six they scored this afternoon on road to a 42-17 win over Iowa. And Devin Gardner accounted for all of them. He was 18 for 23 for 314 yards passing with three TD passes. And on the ground, he ran for 37 yards, scored three TDs. Denard Robinson did play on senior day, rushed for 98 yards. Wolverines now 8-3. and three. Elsewhere, UCLA defeated USA 38-28 first time since 2006. They beat the Trojans. Washington over Colorado 38-3. South Carolina beat Washington. 24-7. Florida over Jacksonville State, 23-0. Rutgers beat Cincinnati, 10-3. Florida State over Maryland, 41-14. Utah State beat 23 Louisiana Tech, 48-41 in overtime. It was LSU over Mississippi, 41-35. Jeremy Hill, a one-yard touchdown run, one of three. He scored with 15 seconds left. That was the difference. Texas A&M over Sam Houston State, 47-28. Clemson beat NC State, 62-48. Nebraska over Minnesota, 38-14. Oklahoma State beat Texas Tech, 59-20. One at the end of the first quarter play, and now into the second, it is Oklahoma leading West Virginia 10 3. The Sprint Cup chase finale is tomorrow at Homestead Miami Speedway. In today's practice run, not a good one for pole sitter Joey Logano. He was involved in a crash with Denny Hamlin and Greg Biffle. Logano will now go to the backup car. He will start at the back of the field. Brad Keselowski, who enters the race with a 20-point lead over Jimmy Johnson, will move up a row, essentially be the pole sitter. The race is on tomorrow at 3 o'clock Eastern on ESPN HD. In the NBA this afternoon, the Celtics beat the Raptors 107-89. to Jason Terry had 20. Rajon Rondo had 20 assists. Elsewhere in the NBA in the second quarter, Washington leads Utah 34-31. In the first, Cleveland leads Dallas. Head coach Jamie Dixon's first trail at halftime of the season into their fourth game. And the two freshmen, it's their first opportunity really to face some adversity. Yeah, we'll see a lot about this team. You know, it's the first time this team as a collective unit have faced a little adversity this year. Uh, they've won some very, very easy games early on. Uh, so we'll see right here how they respond here early in the first half. The first five minutes of this second half is going to be key. Is Jamie a fiery speech halftime guy, or is he a matter-of-fact type guy? You know, he's a fiery type of guy. You know, I'm sure that he was very animated at halftime. And I think one of the things that he probably wasn't, you know, that pleased with was the energy and the effort of his Pitt Panthers team. This team has given a lot of energy and effort through their first three games this year, and I don't think we saw that in the first half. They have Robinson on Bader. Petros guarded by Steven Adams. The kick to Valentine, who passes out. And then the ball knocked away by Robinson. Eight on the shot clock. Good defense so far in this opening possession by the Panthers. Yeah, great job right there by James Robinson. You know, I really think he probably saved the three. Bader was wide open there in the corner. If he doesn't get his hands on that ball, I think Bader had an opportunity to get another shot. Monday, guarded by Robinson. He tries baseline, kicks it back out. Bader with a man in his face. Travis Bader with his third three at the buzzer. A 17-point lead for Oakland. And there you see right there Travis Bader knocking down the jump shot. You know, he's a really, really good shooter. Panthers got to do a better job here offensively of being strong with the ball, getting into the paint and finishing. Steven Adams foul line kicks it out to Trey Woodall. Ten on the shot clock. Woodall looking for the cut. And he finds to leave Zana. Very nice shot right there by Trey Woodall. Really letting the play develop. And finally, to leave Zana, who cut to the basket for an easy dunk there. I guess as anxious as fans will get, you can't go too quick. You can't get a 15 now point deficit back in one possession. No, you have to take it one possession at a time, and it really starts on the defensive end. You know, the Panthers let Bader get free right there for a jump shot on the first play, and I don't think Coach Jamie Dixon was too happy with that. Bader just inside the arc now. No good. Deep rebound controlled by Robinson. Here come the Panthers the other. Robinson guarded by Mundy. 
as he will now take it back out and set up the offense. You know, Lamar Patterson is the guy that I think we need to watch here in this second half and see if he can get going offensively. And he misses that three. Good hustle for the offensive rebound from Stephen Adams, who's being double teamed. He kicks it out to Patterson. Over to Trey Woodall. He passes. Floater. No good. Rebound to Zana. Zana layup up and in. You know, I think Coach Jamie Dixon has to like the energy and effort of his Panthers team early in this second half. Great job right there by Talib Zana being strong and going up and getting the rebound. And ball knocked away but controlled by Carter. Three by Bader. This one bounces around. No good. Rebound to Lamar Patterson. Here come the Panthers the other way. Seem to be picking up some momentum. Trey Woodall will try the three. No good. Rebound to Zana. Out to Patterson. Patterson jumper. No good. Rebound to Zana. Laid it up. No good, but a foul. What a quite the series of plays right there about Talib Zana. Really showing hustle. You know, Talib Zana is not a guy that talks a lot, doesn't say a lot with his words, but you know, he is a guy that provides a lot of energy. And here you see him here Working really hard on the offensive glass. Coming up here, and he's going to continue to stay with the play. And he gives himself an opportunity here to get two free throws. Sana with eight points. No one rolls out. To leave Zana so far this season is averaging 16 points a game. Zana with four rebounds, three of them offensive. Second one goes out, but a rebound to Patterson, and Robinson passes on the open three. Steven Adams has not his place 18 feet away from the basket. Uh, he wants to be a little bit more closer to that basket. Robinson will try this three. That one's no good. Rebound tipped around and knocked off of Zana's hands, and it will be Oakland basketball. You know, and even though the Panthers didn't score in that possession right there, I think if you're Jamie Dixon, you had to be very pleased with the effort and energy here coming out early on in this second half. Got to try to convert offensively, but I think he's pleased with the effort. Now, is Jamie Dixon the one who will talk about four-period increments and you want to win each four-minute before the TV timeouts? Deep three from Monday as he stares at the Oakland Zoo. Wow, you have to give Monday credit right there, you know. A leader of this team stepping up, seeing that his team needed a big bucket, making a shot right there in Lamar Patterson's face. And the drive no good. Rebound by Steven Adams up and in. Patterson missed the original layup. Adams with the putback. Adams gets his first hoop of the game. You know, and it has to... You know, the team has to start on the defensive end for the Panthers if they're going to get back into this game. Got to run their shooters off the three-point line, turn them into drivers, particularly Bader. Started by Trey Woodall. He was open on the cut. But didn't get the pass from Monday. Now Bader, deep from three, contested. No good. Shot clock violation. Good defense from the Panthers, as Panthers have yet to be able to cut into this 14-point lead. Trailing Oakland on Pitt Panthers Television.
Panthers trailing 40-26 here at the Peterson Event Center. The Panthers' new digital ticketing system allows fans to buy, sell, transfer, or donate tickets for basketball games throughout the season. For more information, visit pittsburghpanthers.com slash tickets. And Marcus, it's really been the big men that have kept the Panthers within 14 points, Talib Zahn especially. Yeah, Talib Zahn has done a really nice job of coming out here in this second half and providing a lot of energy. Here you see him there with the easy pass right there by Trey Woodall. And here you see him working on the offensive glass and going up strong. You know, with Dante Taylor in the first half, and now Talib Zahna is doing a really good job of providing that energy and spark for this Panthers team. Eight points, four rebounds as Panthers down 14. Same score, same margin at halftime. As Trey Ziegler has checked in for Patterson. Deep shot from from Patterson, actually, who lays it up and no good, but a blocking foul, and he'll go to the line. You know, nice job right there by, by uh, Lamar Patterson. You know, he's, he's being a little more aggressive. You know, we've talked about him, you know, as being a guy that I think has to be a little more aggressive on the offensive end. You know, he really does a great job of finding other guys, but this Panthers team is really going to need his scoring, and particularly they're going to need it here in the second half if they want to come back and win this game. Panthers now three of eight from the foul line. Part of the reason for that look from Jamie Dixon. And that went around and out. Leaves on it trying to get the loose ball, but Bader's able to track it down. Panthers down 13. See if the Panthers do a great job here defensively. Probably going to switch a lot of the on-ball stuff guard to guard. You have to make sure you know where Bader is. Have no help responsibilities off of him. Shot clock winding down. Opportunity for a trap there. Ball into Petros. Petros up and fake. No good rebound to Patterson. Patterson able to control the basketball over to Robinson. Robinson leading the break. Will feed it to Ziegler. Ziegler foul. Panthers are going to have that opportunities here if they keep being aggressive and going to the free throw line. You got to step up and make free throws now. And here you look at the nice pass into Ziegler and the foul on Bader, his first. That's 30% now from the line. Three of 10. Panthers must take advantage of their chances at the foul line. Anytime you play a good team, whether you're at home or on the road, you have to knock down free throws. Trey Ziegler did a little bit better job on that second shot at getting some art, getting the ball up and over the rim. Now the Panthers back on the defensive end. Let's see if they can get a stop. Monday guarded by Ziegler. Stops his dribble, gets it over to Williams. Williams now on the switch to Ziegler. Monday left wide open on the baseline and gets the shooter's touch. Great job right there by Monday of cutting back door. Talib Zana got, a little, got caught a little bit ball watching and not seeing his man as well. Had to be ball you man when you're guarding off the ball. And Monday took advantage of him. Monday with a game high 14 points. James Patterson setting up the offense. Dante Taylor is checked into the game, has the basketball right now. Ziegler passes up the three. That is not his thing. He shoots on the move. That is. Nice shot right there by Trey Ziegler, showing a shot fake and taking a hard dribble and rising up for the jump shot. It's one thing that he's worked on earlier in the game, earlier in the season, I should say. You know, he was driving a little too far and gets some charges. Bader, contested three, gets the foul. He'll shoot three, and he is near automatic from the line. The foul on Ziegler. You know, they, you can really see in Oakland's offense that they really look for Bader and his and his outside shooting, he's averaging 19 points. So he's obviously a guy that shoots the ball very, very well, but you know, he has the green light to shoot it anytime he has it. He has nine points and is shooting 93% from the foul line. And Oakland has done a much better job than the Panthers at the free throw line there. Six or seven right now with Vader still having two opportunities. And a shocker here at the Peterson Event Center. Oakland a 14-point lead over the Panthers. As Woodall and Moore check in for Robinson and Zana. Limited minutes for Steven Adams in this game. 
as all three free throws go down. Trey Woodall yet to score in this game for the Panthers. Yeah, and that's quite shocking. And here you see Oakland now in the zone defense to see if they can maybe slow down the Panthers offensively. I think uh, Oakland coach probably wasn't like what he's been seeing the last couple of possessions defensively. The Panthers have been able to get some easy shots, and here you see they forced the Panthers into a turnover. As Patterson was caught up in the air. Oakland basketball at its turnover number 10 for the Panthers. Eight for Oakland as Deron Johnson checks in for Patterson. You can probably hear some anxiety in the Oakland Zoo. Oakland not for Oakland, Michigan, but for Oakland, Pennsylvania. Kick out to Bader. Well, they're looking to set him up for the jumper. Two-pointer, no good. Deep rebound controlled by Valentine as Johnson couldn't get to it. And that's usually what wins and loses games. You got to be able to get get those loose balls, and make those hustle plays. And as much as we've talked about the offensive end for the Panthers, you know, Oakland has done a really good job here on the offensive end and conversely defensively for the Panthers. They have to do a much better job of shutting this team down. Valentine gets it in low to Petros. Petros works the hook and gets the foul on Dante Taylor. Corey Petros with 11 points looking for 12. Very nice job right there by Petros being strong. Dante Taylor's got to do a better job of pushing him off the block and keeping his hands straight up. The free throw miss. Tapped out and out of bounds. Panther basketball. This Panthers team is a little shell shock right now, you know. They came out with a lot of intensity early on in the second half. And got to give a lot of credit to Oakland. They've done a tremendous job at matching that intensity, you know, offensively and defensively. And here you see Oakland stand in that zone defense. See if the Panthers are able to get something going. Panthers working it around the arc. Over to Woodall, who is 0 for 8 shooting. Ziggler. Drives to the center, and he has the ball knocked away. Another turnover for the Panthers. Here come the Golden Grizzlies. Bader's going to have a three. And an offensive rebound to Valentine. He gets fouled as Oakland will go to the free throw line, extending their lead to 17. It's a 17-point lead for Oakland as the Golden Grizzlies look for the upset. Oakland has extended their lead on the Panthers, 47 to 30. 
Panther fans, it is never too late to sign up for the Pitt men's basketball season ticket waiting list. Join for free and have first priority for available single game tickets. Call 1-800-643-PITT or log on to pittsburghpanthers.com slash tickets for more information. Panthers trying to dance back into this game, but it has been a Golden Grizzly performance as we have not seen in this building from many opposing teams. 11 turnovers on the Panthers and Oakland, their shooting percentage continues above 50. Yeah, and you have to give a lot of credit to Oakland. You know, they've been the more physical and the tougher team here in this game, and they brought a lot of energy here, and the Panthers haven't done a great job of matching that intensity at all times. And we talked about four minute segments and you know Oakland has done a really good job at the beginning of this second half not only holding their lead but even extending it here by a few points. This freshman James Robinson checks into this game. Robinson with seven points. No Panthers in double digits yet. That rolls out. Dante Taylor the rebound. And here comes Robinson and the Panthers trailing by 18. And if the Panthers want to get back in this game it's going to have to be Trey Woodall who's really going to have to score the basketball and provide some for his team. The lead score of his team, and so far he has not gotten a bucket yet in this game, which is really, really shocking. Robinson thought about the three, but kicks it over to Johnson. Woodall from three. Good! Right there on call there, Trey Woodall stepping into a three. Off of a good pass there by Johnson. Now after you get a bucket, you gotta get a stop on the other end as well. Valentine, the switch, Johnson on Monday. He kicks it, looking for Bader. Bader wasn't looking for it, into the Oakland bench. Panther basketball, down 15. Still more than a half to go. Still a lot of time left in this basketball game. You have to take it one possession at a time. Get a stop, score a bucket, get a stop, score a bucket. Let's see if the Panthers can do the latter here. And a foul there on Monday as he picks up his third. You know, Monday is a guy, he really is aggressive and likes to gamble a lot in that passing lane. You know, Panthers, you know, when you have a guy that likes to gamble a lot, sometimes the best thing is to show him the ball and, and back cut him. I would have liked to see that right there by Deron Johnson and Trey Woodall. And Ryan Bass, who was a spark for them in the first half, returns. Deron Johnson working against Bader. Trey Woodall, fresh off the main three. He's going to drive the lane and kick. Over to Deron Johnson, open for a three. Good! Two straight threes for the Panthers. They're now down a dozen. You know, and that's something that this young man brings off the bench. Deron Johnson is a really good outside shooter. But here you see the Oakland coach is really not liking what he sees. He's going to take a timeout to talk about it. Greg, Greg Campy talking to his team as the lead has been cut down to a dozen. Oakland looking for the upset of the Panthers and their second win of the year. Can the Panthers come back? We'll see here on Pitt Panthers Television.
Welcome back to Panthers basketball here on Pitt Panthers television. The player that made a difference in the Lehigh game is Trey Woodall, 23 points, eight assists, four rebounds, and he had a big three to try to bring the Panthers back in this basketball game, Marcus. Yeah, you know, he had a really tremendous game against Lehigh. And he was kind of one, not only made a three, but made the play right here for Deron Johnson. Here you see him here in the corner knocking down the three. Here's another look at it right here. You know, Deron Johnson is a guy that really brings a scoring spark off the bench as well. He's a really good outside shooter. There you saw an example. You see the Panthers can do a good job here defensively as well and get a stop. It has to be on both ends of the floor to come back from a double-digit deficit. And that player who made a difference brought to you by Central Blood Bank as Petros leading the Panthers with the hook shot. Wow, very nice job right there by Petros answering the Panthers' mini run. You know, they've been able to go down to him, and he's been able to come up big and get them baskets down in the paint. Panthers down 14, same deficit at halftime as that ball way off. Near save, ball knocked around, and it is saved, and a foul on Bader. Good hustle from the Panthers as Bader picks up his second foul, looking for the loose ball. Really got to give a lot of credit right there to J.J. Moore. He hustled that ball down and was able to get that and save that. Great job right there by James Robinson as well, being aware of the play, and Bader's a little shaken up here. Bader has 12 points on three of eight from three. As here you see the play knocking into James Robinson, the obvious foul call. Just Robinson try to fire up a shot. Yeah, I don't think he's quite going to get. I don't think he's going to get the and one opportunity. 14 point deficit for the Panthers. Stephen Adams checks in. So it's Robinson, Woodall, Moore, Adams, and Deron Johnson. Panthers last loss to a non-conference team at home last year against Wagner as they shot the Panthers 59-54. And this Oakland team, you know, they have a lot of guys that they aren't intimidated coming into this building. And obviously, not a lot of teams come into this building and, and leave out with victories, but you can see they're confident. They really believe that they can win this ball game, and they play like it. Lamar Patterson checks in for Deron Johnson. James Robinson gets the inbounds. Patterson lobs it into Adams. Adams, a hard time with his foot in there. Trying to throw up a shot, no good. Rebound to Petros. And here come the Golden Grizzlies trying to build on that lead. You know, I think Jamie Dixon would have liked to see Stephen Adams right there gather himself and go up strong. He's obviously got a, a huge size advantage. He throws with another easy shot, but it's blocked that time by Adams. Here come the Panthers the other way. And it's in the Woodall. Woodall, drive, Moore, deep three. Good! J.J. Moore! Very nice shot right there by J.J. Moore trailing on the play. You know, with him in that power forward position, it really provides the Panthers with a matchup advantage a lot of times. You know, he can trail and get those wide open threes. Once again, let's see if the Panthers can get a stop here defensively. Got to find Bader. Know where he is at all times. Monday out of the game, but about to check in. And ticky-tack foul called on Woodall against Bass. I don't think Jamie Dixon would be too happy right there with Trey Woodall. Keep moving your feet. Don't bail him out by reaching. Make him go side to side. And you see the Oakland coach getting Monday back in the game. I don't think, what he, li I don't think he likes what he's seeing both defensively and offensively here over the last few minutes. As Bass stays in, he'll try the jumper. That is blocked by Woodall, controlled by Adams over to Robinson, back to Woodall. Woodall is going to drive the lane, kick it out to Patterson. Patterson slows it down over to Robinson, who will set up as the Panthers look to get within single digits for the first time since 348 in the first half. The drive to Adams for the slam. Wow, very nice shot right there by Trey Woodall. A find is Steven Adams and him going up strong and finishing. Talked a little bit about a couple possessions ago. He didn't do that. That time you saw the seven-footer from New Zealand finishing strong. Monday driving the lane. Ball knocked around. He's able to kick it to Petros, who lays it up. No good foul on Steven Adams. 
That is a tough call right there. Petros will go to the line to shoot two as the Panthers try to come back on the Stephen Adams flush here on Pitt Panthers television. Panthers now trailing by nine, 7.23 to go in regulation play at the Peterson Event Center as we look at the Panthers' upcoming schedule. Huge game with number five, Michigan at Madison Square Garden. Then they get either Kansas State or Delaware, Howard, Detroit, Duquesne, North Florida, Bethune, Cookman, Duquesne, not a home game, but it is at the Consol Energy Center. All those games televised as the Panthers trying to find a way to come back here and using the three ball. Yeah, here you see right there, J.J. Moore doing a great job of trail in the play. And Trey Woodall was really the one who set up both of those possessions, both on the three, and there you saw the dunk right there by Steven Adams. Uh, we were talking a little bit about it right before the break. That was a very tough call, I thought, on Steven Adams on the last play. Did a good job of helping and got back to his man and just drew a little bit of contact. Gotta give a little credit there to Petros. See if he steps up here and knocks down the free throws. He makes the first 10 of 13 are the Golden Grizzlies from the line, where the Panthers are 4 of 11. He throws, misses that one, Stephen Adams the rebound. Oakland back in the zone, defense here. See if the Panthers can maybe get the ball to the high post, or either J.J. Moore or Stephen Adams, and see if they can work out of that. Lob down low to Adams, hits the rim and knocked around, and Panthers basketball. 14 on the shot clock. You see the ball hit off the rim. They're calling for the reset, but it won't happen. 14 on the shot clock. Head coach Jamie Dixon shouting out instructions. Robinson, the shot clock's dwindling down. Big three from Woodall from the corner. Bang! Very nice job right there by James Robinson of really setting up that play. And Trey Woodall stepping up and making a three, which is exactly what a senior leader of this team is supposed to do. Panthers really turning up the intensity here over the last four or five minutes. That is a 14-2 run now for the Panthers. As Oakland now having a hard time scoring the basketball. Mundy's their leading scorer. He's going to try the deep three. Right on target, but too deep. James Robinson, the rebound. And the foul is going to be on Dante Williams. And I believe it's the J.J. Moore or James Robinson that's going to go to the line. I think it's going to be James Robinson that's going to go to the line there. It's going to be J.J. Moore, actually. As he gets cut down there, and they're going to call the foul. And J.J. Moore is going to... Well, now it's James Robinson. I saw the officials do double four. <laughs> I think they could have... Maybe four minus yeah, four equals one zero. One. There you go. That's maybe what they were doing. Robinson. 
Jackson's first points of the second half. As he pushes Bader after Bader went in front of him after the free throw. The official separating and talking to Robinson and Bader before this escalate, escalates. Eight points now. Perfect from the foul line. Five-point basketball game, the last Oakland field goal coming just before the 10-minute mark. Before that, as Petros puts it up and in. Man, Petros has done a tremendous job of answering every run. You know, he's probably been the MVP here in the second half. Their guards kind of kept and got the lead for him. And he's done a good job. You see the Panthers can answer here offensively. Robinson with 12 on the shot clock over to Patterson. Back to Robinson. Having a little problem with the zone. Drive, dish, layup, up and in. J.J. Moore and the foul. Tremendous play right there by the freshman James Robinson. Of really setting up J.J. Moore. You can see he's very animated. And here you see him take the contact and finish. Now what he has to do is he has to gather himself and make the free throw. Within four, trying for the huge comeback at home against Oakland. And I'm going to watch Lamar Patterson right here. He has to stay close to Bader. You know they're going to try to find him here for a shot. Here he comes off the double screen. And blocked by Steven Adams who came out to help. Here comes Robinson the other way. He was looking deep. Gets it to Patterson from three. No good. Rebound to Petros. Great job right there by Steven Adams of really helping out Lamar Patterson. You can see that play developing, really trying to find Bader. Monday, nice pass looking down low to Petros. Good play by the leader of the Golden Grizzlies. Well, Corey Petros has done a tremendous job. He's got 18 big points, and he's really been the guy who's done it for them in this second half, finishing around the basket. J.J. Moore, the mid-range jumper, no good. Offensive rebound, not there for Steven Adams, controlled by the Golden Grizzlies, who look to build on now a six-point lead. Dante Taylor and Deron Johnson set to check in for the Panthers. This is a big possession right here for both teams. <laughs> Oakland and Pitt. Pitt has to do a good job here trying to get a stop. Adams and Patterson go out. Mentions Taylor and Johnson coming in. Moore out. Zana in. Another substitution. Ziegler in. Robinson out. There will be a TV timeout. The next, likely the next whistle under the four-minute mark. And I think what you're trying to see right here is Jamie Dixon maybe trying to get those guys a little bit of rest so they can finish this game strong here. This game is going to go down to the wire. Valentine in low to Petros, the leading score for Oakland, and he's fouled. Man, Petros has done a tremendous job. He's really put a lot of pressure, you know, on the Panthers. He's a skilled five-man, you know, runs hard in transition. He's a good low-post scorer. And here you see him sealing Dante Taylor off. And all he can really do right there is foul him. He's shooting 88% going into this game from the field. And the free throw rocks around and in. Had 16 rebounds against OU last year. Now you had 12 points in two of the games and coming off a solid performance. His career high is 23. He's got 19 after that miss. Ziegler controlling the ball. Panthers down seven. I think you maybe see a hot ball screen here. Here comes the hot ball screen. Let's see if they can get something working off of the action. Deron Johnson kicks it out. Talib Zana is able to control it. He throws it back out to Ziegler. 15 on the shot clock. Panthers regroup. Screen coming. Ziegler drives. Kicks it over to Johnson. Johnson from three. No good. Rebound Dante Taylor to Woodall. Down low to Zana who misses the layup and a re rebound to Oakland. 
Talib Zahn has got to do a little bit better job right there gathering himself. I think he rushed that layup. And I think the Oakland team got very, very lucky right there. I think that was a 10-second call in the backcourt. Ref didn't quite see it. 13 now on the shot clock as Valentine looks for Bader, but it's knocked away. Here's Woodall, gets it to Deron Johnson. He controls it, stops, Whoa! lays it, no good, but he'll go to the foul line. Panthers will go to the foul line, trailing by seven against the Oakland Grizzlies. We'll watch the end together on Pitt Panthers television. Welcome back to the Peterson Event Center. Oakland leading 56 to 49. Your UPMC fast fact. Freshman Steven Adams and James Robinson made their fourth straight start tonight. Before the season opener, the last time Pitt started two freshmen was January 6, 2004 against Virginia Tech. Antonio Graves and Chris Taft. Marcus, you knew them well. Absolutely. I was a part of that team. Two really good freshmen, uh, similar to these guys. You know, those guys were physically and mentally uh, prepared and ready for this level. You know, we're really going to see these freshmen grow up here in this last three minutes. I think you'll see both James Robinson and Steven Adams play a big role here. It's going to be key for them to get stops defensively as well as do what needs to be done on the offensive end. So some changes to the Panthers lineup. Robinson, Woodall, Zana, Adams. Deron Johnson will shoot the free throws. He'll shoot two. The Panthers will shoot two the rest of the way as Oakland has nine fouls. Johnson Money with the first free throw. Second one is good. Lamar Patterson will replace Johnson. Panthers down five. They were down huge. And you can see the Panthers here with the with the full court press to see maybe they can get a quick turnover here from Oakland. Oakland does a good job of beating the press, but I like that right there coming out of a timeout and made free throws. Show a little full court pressure. Oakland is known to be a team that turns the ball over. And he's here right there with great pressure defense by Lamar Patterson. Monday's pleading his case. But it will be Panthers basketball. Trailing at one time in the second half by 18 points. And here you see right here, I think Money just dribbled the ball between his legs and went back court. Robinson's going to drive the lane, and there's going to be a foul on Steven Adams against Petros. His bodies went flying on the attempted drive. Yeah, that's a tough call to make right there. You know, a lot of contact there in that paint. Not quite sure what happened. Looks like maybe Steven Adams and Petros got tangled up. As maybe he was looking to go for a screen, and the ref was right there to make the call. Here we'll see a replay of it. Still couldn't quite see what happened there. And well, Monday has the basketball as he gives it to Bader and back to Monday. 
Two and a half to go. Five point lead for Oakland. Guarded closely by Patterson. Over to Valentine. Back to Monday, guarded again by Patterson. He's able to blow by him. Yeah. And an offensive foul on Petros. You know, I think that was a great call right there by the ref. Dante Taylor was trying to get around. I'm not sure if it was Dante Taylor or Talib Donald was trying to get around for the help. But Petros, being a smart player there, tried to hold him off. Here you see Dante Taylor, and right there was the hold off there by Petros. Panthers really need to get a bucket here. They got to run a good play. Oakland has done a good job of slowing them down in that zone. Which they remain in. James Robinson thought about the deep three. Donna and Taylor, the big man, over to Woodall. Woodall, he'll take that three, and he'll miss it. Deep rebound to Bader. And he'll slow it down and get it back to Mundy. Under. 145 to go. Five-point lead. The Panthers coming up empty the last couple of possessions. Monday will drive. Offensive foul on Monday. Good job by Dante Taylor as Monday picks up the foul. His fourth. You know, Dante Taylor has just been a guy that's been in the right spots all game, whether it's been offensively or defensively. There you saw another example. Panthers got to get some offense going here. Time is running short with a minute and 40 seconds to go. Went all over to Patterson. Patterson's going to drive. He kicks it down low to Taylor. Knocked out and then off of Oakland. Good hustle by Taylor who lost the basketball. It'll be Panthers ball. And they've gone now four minutes without a field goal. Trying to get back in this basketball game. Still down five, still doable. 127 to go. The freshman James Robinson with the basketball. I think you see guys pressing a little bit here offensively. It's a big possession here. Taylor over to Robinson. Robinson to Taylor to Woodall, the senior leader. And the ball is knocked away as he tried to get it to Robinson. Bader's got the layup. Blocked by Woodall and the foul call as Bader will shoot two. As we mentioned earlier, he shoots 93% from the line. Great hustle right there by Trey Woodall getting back into the play. A little bit of contact there, but I think he might have got the ball first. That's a tough call to make. One thing you can't do is put this young man right here on the free throw line. He's been money all season and all game. J.J. Moore, who can make the three, enters into the game. Talib Zana is out. And I think the difference has been in these last few minutes after the Panthers went on their run, Oakland went back to that zone, and the Panthers were getting a little stagnant offensively. Not getting a lot of movement and cutting, and you'll see here Oakland's going to take a timeout. See if Coach Jamie Dixon can draw something up here to get his team a bucket. As we mentioned, the Panthers' last field goal at 525. And Oakland's a team that has pulled off upsets before. Each of the last two years, they've beaten the BCS team. And four of the last five years, they've beaten a the school from a BCS conference. Yeah, you can tell this is a team that has a lot of confidence. You know, you saw it in the first half. You saw it here in the second half, even when the Panthers tried to make their run. You know, they stepped up, made plays, got stops. I really think the, the zone defense has been something that's Really made the Panthers stagnant offensively here in the last few possessions. Just got to do a better job of going to the paint. So as we're watching Coach Dixon in the huddle, who is he looking to, who does he want to have shooting this basketball? Well, I think he's going to probably put the ball in the senior point guard hand, uh, Trey Woodall, and, or even James Robinson. You know, he, he's had the ball a lot in his hands at the top of the key. I think what you're going to see is maybe a ball screen either at the top of the key or one of the wings and seeing maybe if one of those guys gets in, get into the paint and could create something. Watch out here for Steven Adams also on the offensive rebound if the ball happens to come off here. You might see Oakland may, may, they may switch up their defense a little bit. They've shown zone the last few plays. I wonder if they'll switch it up and go man-to-man -man here for this play. They're going to pressure, token pressure with Valentine, just forcing Robinson on the inbounds to take it early and not bleed too much clock. As he waits to the absolute last second to be able to pick it up. Now the clock will start. Over to Patterson. Patterson has got to do something. Robinson's going to drive. Lay up. No good, but a foul on Williams. His third. 
Robinson to the line. And you know, that's what you have to do against the zone. You know, you can't just get stagnant and pass the ball. You have to drive to the paint. Just like you're seeing right here by James Robinson. Putting pressure on the defense. And there is time to go for two still. Robinson misses the free throw. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You don't want to, you know, it's still a minute left in this game. You don't want to think that you have to get it all back by threes. Keep driving to the lane. Getting opportunities, but you got to knock down the free throws. Robinson makes the second. It is a two, three point possession game. And I think you see the Panthers here once again in a, a full court pressure defense. Let's see if they can get Oakland to turn the ball over here. And if not, maybe a foul early, but you don't want to foul this guy. And that's who Johnson does, fouls Bader. And you can see Coach Jamie Dixon on the bench there after Johnson made that foul. He was not happy. That's just a guy that you can't put at the free throw line late in the game. Mark Patterson checks in for Johnson. As you see, Bader's five for five from the line. And he misses. Rebound to J.J. Moore. Here comes James Robinson. Panthers down six. Robinson kicks it out to Moore. Moore gets it over to Patterson. Over to Robinson who takes the shot. To Patterson who's going to try the deep three. No good as Patterson goes down. Dante Taylor the rebound. Lefty hook is up and in. Panthers down four. Timeout Panthers. 37.2. Panthers trailing by four. And you know, now trailing by four with 37 seconds to go. With obviously a 35 second shot clock. Here you see Patterson missing the three, but Taylor once again is doing a great job on the offensive glass and being strong and going up. And going up lefty. Which is something that he struggled with a little bit last year. You can see that that's something that he's worked on. One timeout left for the Panthers. Remember, they had to burn a few in the first half. Two left for the Oakland Gr Golden Grizzlies. They look for the big upset here at the Peterson Event Center. And I think what Jamie Dixon is telling his team right now is we're going to trap the first pass and try to get a steal. You want to try to get a steal in the backcourt. Don't want to foul immediately. And after the first pass, this is something different. I don't know. They got all five guys outside of them. It looks like it's going to be a sprint. But you can't foul Bader. Five-second violation on Oakland. Wow. Good defense from the Panthers. And the tricky play did not work. Panthers have the ball. Down four. No time going off the clock. And if I'm the Panthers right here, I like to get something going to the basket, whether that's Trey Woodall, James Robinson, or Lamar Patterson. Woodall, the deep three, no good. Rebound to J.J. Moore, who knocks it off Bader. Panther basketball, five went off the clock. You know, I don't think that the Panthers needed that shot right there. I would have liked to see Trey try to get something going towards the basket. Panthers down four. Inbound Probably going to get another opportunity to see if he learns from it. Robinson's going to drive. Lefty, no good. Rebound to Dante Taylor. It's a two-point game. Panthers call their final timeout. Wow! Nice job right there by Dante Taylor. You know, he's just been a guy that's been in the right spots at the right time all game. And going up there finishing on the offensive glass. And check out the crowd here as Dante Taylor finishes. <laughs> And you can hear the emphatic finish as this crowd goes crazy. Dante Taylor, six points, eight rebounds. But he's made a lot more than just those six points and eight rebounds. He stepped up. He's taken quite a few charges in this game. He's gotten some blocks on the defensive end. He's just done a really, really tremendous job. A senior now coming into his own. So you're great camping. You're in a hostile environment. You've seen your lead go from 18 to 2. What are you reinforcing to your team? Well, the first thing I'm not going to do is I'm not going to try that same play that they just tried to have all everybody out of bounds. But I think what he's going to definitely try to do, because you've been a Panthers, you have to foul here. He's going to try to find Bader. Bader's been a guy that's taken the ball out of bounds the last few plays. So let's see if they still stick with that. If I'm the Panthers, I foul the first guy 
that touches the ball. I don't let them get that ball back to Bader. Duke Monday at half court, as it is indeed a different setup for Oakland inbounding the basketball. I think you're going to see Monday flash to the ball here. Bader's going to run the baseline and try to get the ball in his hands. Greg Campy has two timeouts for the Golden Grizzlies. It is quite the atmosphere here in the Peterson Event Center. And an offensive foul called on Oakland. Wow. Great job right there by J.J. Moore. I think he sold that. If I'm the Oakland coach, I can't be too happy with that foul call, but a veteran move there, a little push-off. Let's see if we can see it here exactly what happened. And that is the fifth foul on Valentine, who picks up the foul. Right champion remaining call somewhat. And there's the push. Absolutely, you know. By right, Valentine. Right there in front of the official. He's spinning his arm. Maybe a bit of a People's Choice Award. Not quite Oscar, but People's Choice <laughs> by J.J. Moore. What an end to this basketball game that has been Oakland's to win for the entire second half. The Panthers clawing back. Now down two points with the basketball as Greg Campy talks to the officials as they have some time with the foul out. This has been a tremendous basketball game. You know, the Panthers have just clawed and fought the whole way here in the second half. And you really got to give a lot of credit to the opening team, too. You know, I thought that they answered all the runs. But the Panthers have just done a really tremendous job here in these last few minutes. And I think it's been sparked by Dante Taylor. You work it for the two, or do you set up for the three and the win? I think you have to go for the two. And what you want to do is you want to continue to put pressure on the defense. If you, if you, if you get something going towards the basket, you put pressure on the defense and even the referees. A foul gives you two opportunities at the free throw line. And as we've seen, even when they've gone to the basket, the Panthers have been in great position to get offensive rebounds as well. 28 seconds left. James Robinson, the true freshman, will inbound. Interesting here. They try to get Trey Woodall in the game. But they couldn't. Panthers get it deep to J.J. Moore. Moore to Robinson, 25. He's going to set up the play. Oakland goes back into man-to-man. -man. You're going to see a hot ball screen here. James Robinson waves it off. He's going to drive. Gets Bader. Travel. Travel. Get up no, we're going to have a travel on James Robinson. Before the foul call, we'll have a timeout by Oakland. They'll have the basketball. 14.7 to go after the Robinson turnover. You know, I think that might have been the right call there. Here we'll see it. James Robinson. Wow, that's a tough call. I think it's a, I thought it might have been a short try when I saw it in real time, but looking at the replay, maybe his feet got a little shuffled there. And sometimes on those jump stops, one hits before the other. So now Panthers have to foul. At the and foul. And they can't foul number three. You can't foul Bader. You know, even though he missed. His last free throw, he is not going to be a guy that's going to miss too many of those. So what I do here, let's see if the Oakland coach maybe learns and not have Bader take the ball out. He take a chance this again. Let's look at it from this angle. They have hopped his feet a little bit. You know, interesting here, the, the Oakland coach still has Bader taking the ball out. Then the Panthers, you got to foul the first guy that gets the ball. Oh! So we got a steal here by James Robinson. Robinson. I think a foul. Whistle blows and a foul called, a holding. Ten seconds left. And James Robinson will go to the line with a chance to tie this basketball game. And the fifth personal foul on Duke Watch Mundy. Watch this heads-up play right here by James Robinson. You know, Did you not, call an intentional there? No, I don't think you want to call an intentional there. I think he really was just trying to prevent it from... You know, he, he would have given up a layup. Obviously, now that's his fifth foul. If this game happens to go into overtime, I think we're going to look back at that. And that's going to be a huge play. The freshman James Robinson is going to have an opportunity maybe here to make up for 
the previous travel call. He'll have two shots. We'll hear this place go from so loud. To that. One point deficit for the Panthers. And if you're the Panthers, you have to be ready right now on the defense just in case this one doesn't go through. The freshman stands at the line and ties the game with 10 to go. Ice cold. Here comes see Bass Oakland. as Oakland will use their final timeout. Wow. What a nice job right there by the freshman stepping up to the line. Ice cold. Didn't touch the rim on either one of those. And this is going to be an interesting six seconds here. I think you're going to see a couple things for the Panthers defensively. And here you see the eyes. Those are the eyes of a true winner right there. Stepping up with confidence, knocking and, down the free throws. And you know what I like? No reaction. No reaction at all. Back into the play like a senior would do. And that's what the other players have talked about with this kid, that he's come right in and fit right in and not be afraid to tell other older players where to be in certain plays. It's a stack situation for let's, Oakland. Let's see, I think you're going to see the Panthers switch everything. You have to know what Bader is. Oh, I think we're going to have a turnover. Possession to Pitt. And it's going to be just possession. Ball. Panther basketball, four wow. eight to go. Neither team with the timeout. Trey Woodall checks into the game for the Panthers. Wow, this game has taken quite a few twists and turns. Everything really working in the Panthers' favor here. Inbounds to Woodall. Woodall with the clock winding down. Woodall throws it up behind his head off the backboard, and we're going to overtime. And I think that... <laughs> Jamie Dixon would have liked to see a much better shot there at the end of that game, but he has to be happy with giving his team another five minutes. We'll be back with overtime here on Pitt Panthers Television. up to the line and making two huge free throws. And remember what we talked about at the end of regulation, when Mundy fouled out, he had a turnover and he committed, a, a committed an immediate foul. And I think that's going to be a guy that they may really miss here in the overtime. So no Mundy, no Valentine. Two starters out for an Oakland team not known for their depth. Panthers come out with J.J. Moore starting the overtime with Robinson, Woodall, Adams, and Patterson. And Oakland's going to go back to a man-to-man -man defense. That zone defense is really what got him in the game. And Mark Patterson has one point in this game. He passed up that shot, gets it over, and gets the ball back. They're going to run the offense through him. Steven Adams. Trey Woodall with five on the shot clock. Doesn't have anything. Gets it to Robinson. Robinson with three. He hits it. 
And they're going to take a look to make sure that was a three. James Robinson was his foot on the line. What can you not like about this freshman? He's got a big smile on his face. As you saw him step up to the line, make two huge free throws to send the game into overtime. And here we'll see it right here. Let's see if he got both of those feet behind the line. I think you're going to see this called a two-pointer. I think definitely his left foot there was on the line. As the officials continue to look at it, and James Robinson, a free timeout for both teams. Each team has one timeout in the overtime session. What a last 20 minutes in real time of this basketball game. It is indeed a two. Panthers with their first lead since the first half. Wow. And you know what I like about James Robinson as well? Now he's going to step up and take the challenge defensively and guard Bader, who you know that Oakland has to be looking for here, sending him off the screen. Stephen Adams doing a great job of showing. Bass tries to get the shot off and a rebound to Petros. And Bass has the basketball, and Bader's going to find a way to get his hands on it, even if that's stepping out to the 28-foot line, I believe. Here comes Bader working off a double screen. He has it. He shoots it. He misses. Rebound over the back is going to be called on Oakland. Raphael Carter picks up his third. As last time I said J.J. Moore would have gone to the line, but let's find out for sure. <laughs> well, I think this time you're going to be definitely right. I think we're going to see J.J. Moore here go to the free throw line, see if he can extend his lead to four points here for the Panthers. Two. And more. Two of two from the foul line. Twelve points. For J.J. Moore. Only two Panthers in double figures. J.J. Moore and James Robinson. Second free throw, the excitable J.J. Moore, as the Panthers now have a four-point lead. Have to continue to get stops. Got to find Bader. Good job right there by Dante Taylor stepping out and helping. When he comes off those screens. Well, that was a sick crossover by Bass as he puts the lefty up and in. And lead cut to two. Great job right there by Bass. He knows that Trey Woodall has four fouls, so he's going to attack him on the offensive end. Yeah, the Panthers can answer here offensively. Inside of Dante Taylor. Taylor. Righty hook. Dante Taylor with eight. Nice job right there by Dante Taylor gathering himself, going up strong with the right jump hook. Have to do it on both ends of the floor. Petro's coming off the screen. And he's open. He shoots. He misses that one too. Patterson. Leaps up for the rebound, the one-handed rebound, and James Robinson has the basketball as we are near midway through overtime. And you know, it was that slight contest at the end right there by James Robinson that threw off Bader, who's an incredible shooter. Trey Woodall contested by Bass. Trey Woodall's got to be careful here. Over to James Robinson. He fakes the three. He fakes the jump shot. Kicks it out to Patterson. Patterson fakes. Kicks. Shot from J.J. Moore. Goal! And you have to love that offensive possession right there by the Panthers. Great job. You know, I really thought Lamar Patterson should have took that shot. Bader tries to answer. Got take Taylor. The rebound ball knocked out of his hands. Panther basketball. And this place is ready to explode. Dare I say it's a zoo. Greg Campy put Matt Poaches in the game. First time he's been in the game. And he enters in probably to foul somebody. Here you're going to see them. Oakland's going to have a little full court pressure here. Panthers. Backcourt violation on the Panthers. Good defense from Oakland. As they'll get the basketball down seven. 156 to go. 
And I think Coach Jamie Dixon, you see he's very animated right there. I think he was really trying to get a timeout there. He saw that shot clock getting down. Now to the officials defense, if Jamie was trying to call it, it is rather loud in here. It is very loud. I can barely hear you and you're sitting right next to me, Jeff. As a warning to the Panthers bench from the officials. Inbounds to Bass. New shot clock. As he will drive on Woodall, throw up a crazy shot off the rim. Rebound to J.J. Moore. Moore to Trayvon Woodall. Panthers get it over the timeline to James Robinson. Robinson guarded by Poches. Good defense from Poches. And he's picked off on the screen to Lamar Patterson. Patterson ready dribble over to Woodall. 15 on the shot clock. He'll get the screen. Woodall looking inside. Crossover dribble. Nice pass on Taylor! Trey Woodall giving him a crossover and finding his roommate, Dante Taylor, for the easy finish. The Panthers have done a tremendous job offensively here in this overtime. I think they may have scored on every possession with the exception of the last 10-second turnover. And a one-handed shot by Bader goes down. The lead cut to seven as time ticking away on Oakland. Woodall, oh, near steal, but a foul on Bader. That's his third. The Panthers got a bit of a break there because I believe that clock should have stopped after the made bucket. Yeah, anytime it's uh, under a minute, the clock is supposed to stop until the ball comes in. Panthers are going to have to do a good job of closing out this game here from the free throw line. Up seven points. Oakland is not going to have any choice but to try to extend this game and make it into a foul shooting contest. The Panthers have been up to the challenge so far here in overtime. Saw them miss a number of free throws early in this basketball game. A one point, three of ten from the line. Now 15 of 23. That means they've missed only one since then. I was trying to do the math there in my head there. Thank you, good job. Thank you to my assistant high math teachers. And that one's no good as I jinx it. Eight point lead for the Panthers. Got to find Bader. Bader has the basketball. He creates, shoots, no good. Three Panthers battling for the rebound, and somehow Oakland comes up with it. Williams gets it stolen by Patterson. Patterson's going to try to run out the clock. No foul from Oakland. Wow, if you're open here, you have to foul. And they are conceding this game. As James Robinson works it into the middle, and they're going to run out the clock. As Robinson goes down, Ziegler puts it over to Patterson and dribbles it back out. What a tremendous comeback for the Panthers. Give a lot of credit to Oakland. And they finish with a stuff. A huge comeback for the Pitt Panthers as they remain undefeated. 4-0 for the Panthers. Dante Taylor with big. J.J. Moore, 16 points. James Robinson with 14. Dante Taylor with 10 as the Panthers outscore Oakland in this second half. So for Marcus Bowman, I'm Jeff Hathorne saying so long from the Peterson Event Center where the final score hit 72, Oakland 62. To watch this entire game on replay as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks, log on to watchespn.com or download the watch.